In this video, I'm going to show you all how to visualize factorial time complexity. We'll start with the function that we'll call f. And this function will be a recursive function. So this first portion of the code is going to be our base case. So if the value for n passed to this function is equal to 0, then we're going to print these stars, and then we're just going to return. But if we pass a value to n that's not equal to 0, then we will go down here to this for loop. So let's start with an example. So let's say that we pass the number 3 to our function. What will happen first is we'll check to see if n, which is 3 in our case, is equal to 0, which it's not. And then we'll move on to this for loop. And what this for loop is going to do is for every iteration of n, for every iteration up until 3, from 0 up until 3, which is our n, we're going to recursively call this function again this time using our n minus 1. So let's, let's try to visualize this. So if we pass 3 to this function and we end up at this for loop, we can write it out like this. So for each index up until 3, but not including 3, 0, 1, 2, and the reason we're only doing for each index 0, 1, 2 is because here, i starts off as 0, and we're going to iterate through our input value n up until i is no longer less than n. So once i becomes equal to n, then we'll stop. So if i were to be 3, then we wouldn't go through this loop again. So that's why it's 0, 1, 2. And for each of these iterations, 0, 1, 2, we're going to call this function again. And that's going to look something like this. So if you look here, we're subtracting a 1 from n that we're passing to the function at each iteration of this for loop. So if n is 3 here, for each of these, n is going to be equal to 2 because we're going to subtract a 1 for each of these. So these are actually going to be f2. And for each of these, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the first call to this function, to this f function. But this time we'll only iterate through indexes 0 and 1. So each of these are their own individual calls to this recursive function, right? And each of these need to have their own for loop, which is this, this, and this. So at this point, f is 2. So we're iterating up until i is no longer less than 2. So we'll have index 0 and 1 that we're iterating through. And for index 0 and 1, we're going to do this. And the same for this call to the recursive function. For index 0 and 1, we're going to do this. And the same for this one. And I apologize if the writing here is getting too small, but you'll see that this recursive tree gets very large very quickly. So I'll actually need to shrink this down a little bit so that we can have more room. So for each of these, we're going to call the recursive function again. But this time the function is being called with 2 minus 1, which is going to mean that our n is going to be 1. And let's make this a little bit smaller, actually. And again, I apologize. So at this point, our for each is only going to happen once for index 0.
Oh man, this is getting really tiny. Okay, so at this point, our f is 1 for all of these calls to the recursive function. And i starts off as 0, and as long as i is less than n, which is 1, then we'll do this code. And it's only going to be less than n when it's 0, which is this one iteration. So for each of these calls to the recursive function, we're only going to call this function once for this first iteration, which is 0. And at this point, it's going to be f1 minus 1. And f1 minus 1 is actually going to be equal to 0. So it's going to be f0. So we're going to be passing 0 as our n to the function. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to see because it's small, but if we remember up here in the actual function, our base case is if n is equal to 0, then we're just going to console log and then we're going to return. So for each one of these calls to the recursive function, we're going to perform this code, this console log code. Hey, just one quick interruption. If you are finding this video helpful or it's bringing you to some type of understanding, please take the time to like and subscribe. And then after we perform this console log code, we're going to return. So it's going to be finished. This entire function will be finished because all of these are going to return. They're going to log the code and then they're going to return. And once all of these return, this entire function is going to be complete. It's going to terminate. So instead of writing out console log, we'll just write that each of these functions performs log. And after the log, the function will return. So it'll stop. So for the last time, I'm going to need to make this a little bit smaller. All right, so what we're left with when this function is finished is we're left with this tree structure, and this tree structure shows how many recursive calls that we had to make to get to our base case for each of these recursive calls. And if you look here, I'll go ahead and circle these so that you can see them more clearly. If you look here, for each of these recursive calls to the function, we had to perform this code. We had to perform this code here for each of these recursive calls to the function. So at the final level where our base case was, we had to perform this code. And if you count these, you'll see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times we needed to perform this code. Passing three into our function caused us to need to recall this final recursive call to our function six times and perform this code six times. And that number six is our key to understanding uh, factorial time complexity because if you look here, we have O of three factorial. And the reason why is because our N is three, right? So it's, we're just substituting. So O of three factorial, right? And three factorial is six actually because to get the factorial of a number, you just multiply every number up until that number. And if we multiply two times one, we get two. And if we multiply that two times three, we get six. And, and again, we needed to execute this console log, this code, we needed to execute one, two, three, four, five, six times. And if we dig a little deeper, we'll see that three factorial is a result of multiplying every number up until three, which is also the same as multiplying every number from three down until one, which we can see if we look at how n progresses through our tree structure here, we can see that first three is passed, so first three is passed, and then three times two is passed, three times, so 
times 3 times 2 is passed, and the result of 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 times 6 times 1 is passed, so 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 1 is passed. So this for loop first passes 2 3 times, so it passes 2 3 times, 1, 2, 3, which is the same as 3, 3, 3 times, times 2, 3 times, 1, 2, 3, passing 2. And when we pass 2 to the function, we do two iterations, so three times two iterations. So we're going to do this, we're going to iterate through this for loop of two iterations three times, three times two. And then three times two is going to be six because we do two iterations for each of these three. So this, these iterations plus these iterations plus these iterations equals six iterations. And for each of these six iterations, we're going to pass one to the function. So six iterations, so six times we'll pass one to the function. So that's here, six times one, six times one. And that is factorial time complexity. I hope that makes sense.